Welcome back to the channel. Chelsea were victorious against Manchester United at Stamford Bridge. It's almost unheard of. I think it's been eight years since Chelsea got a result against Manchester United. Cole Palmer was turning up again. He is the sole reason that we were able to beat Manchester United. The Manchester United fan, as a kid, came back again against another Manchester side to prove why that City should have been begging him to stay there. He's now Chelsea's boy, Chelsea's man. I think Peter Drury described him as, what do we have on our hands? We have one of the best players in European football. That is for sure. He's an exceptional talent, over 30 goals and assists now. Let's talk about the game, shall we? Because that's a massive win. I said yesterday on live that if we could beat Manchester United and actually start putting something together and it felt like a massive win, this could really define our season. If we'd have lost yesterday, which it felt like we were fading out to about the 80th minute, honestly, I think the season would have been done. I would have been more than happy to write it off because there was nothing to play for. There was one game against City, but the way we performed for the majority of the game yesterday, it wouldn't have even been worth turning up to Wembley. Let's start off the first 20 minutes. Three and a half minutes in, Conor Gallagher, the man who had to right his wrongs after his performance against Burnley, arrives late into the box, which we're starting to see in his game so much more now. He scores with a fantastic finish. A great goal. Um, look, people are talking about Anana should do better, but Connor hits that so confidently, so swiftly, that Anana can't get down in time. It's a great finish. Really, really impressed with how Connor fought back to show that, yeah, he knew he weren't good enough against Burnley and he can do better. And I think he tried to almost be a little bit too creative at times. We saw some of the passes being a bit wayward, but an improvement, okay? Then there's the penalty shout from Kukurea. Definite pen. I don't know what people are talking about. Goldbridge hasn't stopped moaning about the refs. What a joke. He's embarrassed himself last night, that bloke, because there's no problem with the penalty decision, either the Kukurea one or the one later on against Madueki. They're both penalties, and he'd be screaming for him if he was a United fan. you got Bruno screaming for our balls when it's hitting, uh, it's hitting faces. Geezer's a clown. Man United, they should be embarrassed for how they started that game of football. Really, really poorly. And the problem I have is, Casado, like, let's talk about Cole Palmer's penalty, tucked it away unbelievably well. We're 2-0 up, we're 20 minutes in, we're cruising against Manchester United, the team we haven't beaten in ages. The football we are playing, some of the best football we've played under Pochettino. The energy, the directness, the fact that every time we went forward we looked like we were scoring. It was great. Then, Casado. He weren't having the best of games. He makes a fatal error. Any chance that Manchester United got to slip or find a way back into that game was going to be a disaster because we know what happens. Chelsea's heads drop. We fall off. We let him back in. And it was almost inevitable that the pendulum was swinging the other way. And before you know it, they're at 2 all. The first goal is obviously shocking from Casado. It was so poor. It's probably one of his worst games in a Chelsea shirt. Then... The goal that they score from a Chelsea corner is the three players we left back. I think it was Kukurea, Gusto, and Casado. I think. Ch tell me if I'm wrong on that, but I think that's the three players we left back. They're all over the place. Kukurea was out right back. Gusto was in the middle, and Casado was at left. Why on earth is Kukurea not on the left? Gusto on the right, and just put Casado in the middle. It, it just absolutely baffled me. It's so unorganised. And I have to blame the management because they're telling the players to do that. Then, obviously, Manchester United, Bruno attacks it. I think he gets the ball on the edge of his box, knocks it away with a header, starts with a counter-attack. It's pretty much all one touch, and he's there at the back post to finish it with a header as well. It's a really good goal, really, really good counter-attacking goal for Manchester United. They cut through a very disorganised, poorly planned out Chelsea defence from that corner. Um then, which and also conceding from your own corner is awful. Like that's really, really poor, really poor. That's on the players as well. You just don't let that happen. You bring someone down, you foul a man. You, you just do not let that happen. Really, really bad. Um, then we went into half time, and we all knew what would happen. We all knew what would happen, and Chelsea came out flat footed, as per usual. And obviously, Manchester United pretty much thought they'd won the game, didn't they? We we really didn't look like we were even there for probably 45 minutes starting the second half till about 
the 90th minute, if we're being honest. We weren't really in that game, were we, to, to be honest? That was disappointing for me because we've seen it so much with Pochettino that he's not able to get his team doing the right things after half time. And again, that's what's happened. And it's like, when are you going to learn, Poch? When are you going to change up what's being said at half time? What's happening at half time? Because there's such a drastic fall off. We should never have gone into half time level, um, at, but we should never be coming out half time as flat as we are. And there's, a, there's a big issue there for me. Um, we saw defensive frailties, I'd say. The defence looks so unorganised. Thiago Silva, he's just going to fade away, isn't he, into the bleak obscureness of forgetfulness. Oh, yeah, do you remember he played for Chelsea? It's awful. There's no way a legend of the club should be being allowed to just sort of be faded out like this when our defence is so poor. Look, I know I moaned on on the ball, he's a bit slower, but maybe I'll take defensive solidarity over the fact that we moved the ball slightly quicker because you cannot debate it. It's another three goals last night. It's 13 goals conceded in six games or something like that. It's awful. We are conceding goals for fun and unless we score more than the other team, we aren't going to win games. And luckily last night, we managed to do it. So obviously Manchester United went 3-2. I thought it was done. I thought it was over. I think, um, oh, look... They had an okay side last night, Manchester United, but the players I expected to turn up really didn't. Garnacho managed to get himself two goals. I can't really moan at that third goal. I'm just trying to picture it in my head. There's not too much that we could do to drastically change that. And if we hadn't conceded then, I think we would concede at another point in the game. What I'm happy about, though... okay. Pochettino subs are one thing I'm not happy about. I cannot work out, unless it's for injuries, why when we're 3-2 down, you're bringing on a right back who isn't attacking, uh, probably because of Gusto not being fully fit, and then you're bringing off De Zassi for Chalab Chalaba. I, I, I didn't really understand that. It must be for injury as well. Um, then, out of nowhere, we start pushing. Chuck Wemeka started getting on the ball more. Sterling was getting on the ball, but not actually being... He wasn't doing too much of importance with it, to be honest with you. He's a little bit slow. And I feel like Raheem can be like that when he comes on as a sub. He, he, that's why I think he's almost better to start, because he can bring himself up to the speed of the game. And we manage to score. No, we manage to get Mad Madueke against uh, Dallow. And it's a definite penalty. Dallow clearly touches the back of his foot. He goes down. Cole Palmer, when I'm doubting him the most, I'm saying this is huge. This is, if he scores this, he is so far ahead of where I believed he was in his mind. And, and he did it with effort. Without, he did it with ease. It looked effortless. It was fantastic the way he put that second penalty away. When you've already scored one, the second penalty always becomes harder. That was fantastic. And then, to top it off, when everyone... He's thinking, okay, we've got a draw here. We've shut Manchester United up. Thank goodness for that. We're gonna we're gonna actually come away with something in this game that we probably shouldn't have for the majority of it. Because the way we started was good enough to win that game, but that dropped off pretty quickly in the scale of the game and the time that the game went on for. Twenty minutes out of a hundred probably isn't enough. Well, the final ninety seconds, wow, did we deliver because we start going forward again. Ball falls to Sterling in the box. I think he has a shot or an effort of a cross and it's blocked and it comes back out. So maybe to Kukurea. Kukurea then plays it to Chuck or Carney. He has a shot, goes out for a corner. Everyone's asleep, but for Enzo Fernandez. Enzo Fernandez. Manchester United players are pointing over at Cole Palmer, pointing at Enzo Fernandez. Saying they're going to take a quick corner, but no one is happy to run out there. Enzo's alive like he was all game. Let's talk about Enzo Fernandez because yesterday he was fantastic. When his midfield partner was horrific in Casado, he stepped up into that game. He was controlling the game. He was looking for passes that I've been waiting to see Enzo looking for for so long. And he was executing them. That's the biggest fact. He was executing his passes that were complicated last night. He was choosing the right option. He was playing it to the player at the perfect time. I was so impressed yesterday. So impressed with Enzo Fernandez. And actually, away from what he was doing on the on the pitch with the ball, what he was doing without the ball, getting in Mason Mount's face. 
telling him what he thinks. You know what that tells me? That tells me that Mason Mount wasn't forced out. When the players are that unhappy with him, it means he turned his back on them last season. That's what that means. They spent six months together. Enzo knows. Enzo knows. It says a lot. It says an awful lot about Mason Mount for me, what I saw the players react to. Even, even Alfie Gilchrist has, had a, has thrown shade at him. Let's call it that. And that would have been a player that Alfie was looking up to. Rhys James was very, very secretive, secretively clapping. You can see it when Mount's coming on. And I'm not sure what that says. They're probably friends, and that's probably why he's doing it. But maybe he should have kept his hands a little bit lower. Clapping an absolute Judas like Mason Mount. But Cole Palmer obviously switched on as well to what Enzo Fernandez was hoping to do. Come short for the corner and absolutely rifles the ball in. He's got so much time that it hits McTominay and obviously beats the di Anana who's diving the wrong way. Fantastic. Like, Stamford Bridge erupted. You can just see this passion on Pochettino's face that I haven't seen yet as Chelsea's manager. It looked real. It looked like he was happy that we'd won. It looked like, for a second, he was Chelsea. And I'm not even lying. That's kind of what it looked like. There's no, you know what it is. There's no fluffing it up like you. Like he's saying he doesn't want to kiss the badge. And he does. Chelsea, we when we see a manager, we know if it's real or not. And the way Poch celebrated last night, that was real. That was like actually, do you know what? I want this team to win, and that's what I'm here for. And we've been calling out for that as Chelsea fans. We want to see him have some sort of connection with this club, and obviously he wants to do it naturally, which I get, but. That was that was a moment for me last night. I've not been happy with him in that sense. I really haven't. I've not felt any connection. But last night, I saw it. Look, he wasn't great in what he asked his team to do. And there's issues with the tactics again. And we probably should have lost that game against Manchester United. And the way we lost it was really, really sad. Like, the way we were falling away from that game was bad. I know we didn't lose it in the end. But we, we got to 90 minutes and we were 3-2 down. And it felt like... There wasn't anything to be getting from that. But out of nowhere, the players fought. And we've said this before. He's still got that dressing room. That dressing, He's not lost the dressing room. I just think that some things haven't been good enough. But they're not, not playing for him. You know, we've seen it before. Like Potter, I think Potter lost that dressing room. It's not happening now. They're not down in tools. Which actually, you could argue, was sort of a toxic trait that we had under Abramovich's era. And if, we, if that's gone, that wouldn't be the worst thing for me. But... Actually, the only issue I have is we're just as likely to go and lose against Sheffield United after a fantastic result like that against Man U. It doesn't matter how you get it. We got a win. And we did score four goals, which is huge. And we probably could have had more. Manchester United probably could have had more too. But Cole Palmer created eight chances on his own. It worries me a bit because it almost seemed like at points yesterday it was Cole Palmer pulling us out again. But... Enzo really impressed me. Jackson, I felt, had a really good game. Unlucky not to score. A couple of good efforts. Anana pulled out a couple of good stops. I was happy. Most underwhelming player for me going forward attacking-wise was Mudrick. I feel like he didn't do enough yesterday. But actually, what a game. Like To go and beat Manchester United 4-3, that gap is closed to five points with a game in hand. That's massive. Europe is back in our sights. After what felt... Imagine if we'd gone and beat Burnley, which we should have done. Oh, we'd be so much closer. We'd be we'd be three points away. It's crazy. That's how big that Burnley draw is. It, it's so important that you win those sort of games. And Sheffield United is that again. Let's see what happens. I'm super excited for that game now. When I actually felt like there was nothing to fight for. I feel like this season, if we can turn up and treat every game as a final... We could get Europe, which would be unbelievable. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I appreciate all of you tuning in. Uh, I'll be doing a few more lives because we've got a good response to that pre-match build-up. So maybe we'll do one for Sheffield United. Drop a like if you're enjoying the content. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I want to chat to more of you guys. I know there are more of you watching that want to have your say. So let me know. And potentially, we can do some call-ins and stuff like that for people who want to chat about the game and post-game stuff on the lives. That would be interesting. So let me know your thoughts. And... Uh, Subscribe if you're new, because we're on the road to 2,500 subscribers, which we will get to eventually. Let's try and get 20 likes on this video. That'd be amazing. I'll catch you in the next one.